Hi guys! Bago tayo mag sa ating series about material balance, pag-usapan muna natin yung mga procedures na magandang napafollow natin whenever we are trying to solve a material balance problem. Ang reference natin dito guys is yung section 7.2 ng Principles of Chemical Engineering 7th edition by Himmel, Blue and Riggs. Well, bakit natin pinag-aaralan to guys? Bakit natin kinocover itong topic na to? Well, let us take note this quote guys. An orderly method of analyzing problems and presenting their solutions represents training in logical thinking that is of considerably greater value than mere knowledge of how to solve a particular type of a problem. Well, in solving problems, guys, lalo na dito sa mga ma-encounter nating problems sa material balance, dapat na yung logical thinking natin ay mas mataas kaysa sa knowledge natin kung paano lang solvein yung mga problems na nakikita natin. At hindi lang yung parang minimemorize lang natin yung solution. Well, ika nga, dapat daw gumagamit tayo dito ng engineering judgment natin. In which, ibig sabihin, dapat gumagamit tayo ng mas maraming common sense. Kasi hindi pa laging mathematics. Kailangan paganahin natin yung common sense natin para maintindihan natin ito bang sinosolve natin mathematically, may sense pa o wala na. So, let's give an example. No? Halimbawa, meron tayong trabahong gagawin, uh, magtatayo tayo ng brick of all. And then, as per sa data natin, one man can finish the job in 10 days. And then, dahil gusto natin na matapos kagad yung trabaho, kinalculate natin mathematically, and it says, 10 men can finish the job in one day. Pero sabi natin, gusto ko pa rin mas mabilis. So, 240 men can finish the job in one hour. Also, it means that 14,400 men can finish the job in one minute. And then, with 864,000 men, the wall will be up even before a single brick is in place. Kasi, kasi mathematically, pag puro conversion lang tayo, it will mean that in one second, with 864,000 men, tapos na kagad yung job. Which is really impossible and illogical. So, mahalaga yung logical thinking dito, guys. So, isa-isahin na natin ngayon yung mga steps na makikita natin dito sa section 7.2 ng Principles of Chemical Engineering 7th Edition on how to solve a material balance problem. Bago tayo magpatuloy sa ating discussion, we would like to ask for your support to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please click on the notification bell para lagi kayong updated sa mga ipopost naming mga video. We also like to invite you to register sa aming website, www.engineers.org. Our website is an online community for Filipino engineers, engineering students, and STEM students. So, step 1 natin, read and understand the problem statement. So, mahalaga guys, nabasahin nating mabuti yung given problem natin. Wrong understanding of the problem will give you a wrong solution. Kasi kung mali yung pagkakaintindi mo, yung pagkaka-analyze mo sa problema, so, malabo na makuha mo yung tamang sagot. Make sure you know what are the given information necessary in solving the problem. So, kailangan talaga ng careful analysis para makita ninyo kung ano ba yung uh, relevant na information na kakailanganin natin in order to solve the problem. Identify the requirements. So, ano ba yung kailangan mong kunin? Kapag nagsosolve ka ng problem, dapat alam mo bakit mo siya sinosolve. Ano yung kailangan mong may provide? So, ano yung hinihinging information ng problem? No? Then, you can try to rephrase the sentence to make sure that you understand the problem. So, isa ito sa mga possible ways na pwede mong gawin. Kapag katingin mo, uh, medyo mahirap intindihin yung problem na given, try mo siyang i-rephrase and then see kung may sense ba yung pagkakaintindi mo sa problem. Step 2, draw a sketch of the process and specify the system boundary. Well, isasabay ko na rin guys itong step 3 which is place the label, symbols, numbers, and units on the diagram for all the known flaws, material, and composition. Well, kaya ako pinagsama to guys kasi we have a separate video uh, which will cover both of this. Okay, so may video tayo dyan yung how to create a flow chart. So, on that video, we will give you an example how to apply these particular steps. Kaya maganda na mapanood ninyo yun. And you will see that this step 2 and step 3 are already covered on that video. 
Well, this is very important guys. It is always a good practice to begin solving problems by drawing a sketch of the process or physical system. And you will see guys as we go along solving a lot of material balance problems. May kita ninyo kung gaano kahalaga talaga yung marunong tayong mag-sketch ng diagram or flowchart. Now, step number four is to obtain any data you needed to solve the problem but are missing. Kasi may mga problems guys na hindi naman lahat ng information binibigay. Some information kailangan ikaw ang kumuha or maghanap. It could be physical properties, for example, density or molecular weight na makukuha mo by using physical properties data. No? Magagamit natin yung handbook natin or yung iba pang mga references. Step number 5 is to choose a basis. Well, eto guys, makakaroon tayo ng separate video uh, explaining how to choose a basis whenever you are solving a material balance problem. But for now, I will give you the three basic uh, ways in selecting a basis. It could be based on what you have, kung ano yung nasa given. It could be based on what do I want to have, or it could be what is convenient. So, you can choose in any of these three uh, kung alin ba dito yung magiging mas madali para sa iyo na solving yung problem. And then guys, we have step 6 and step 7. Pagsasamahin ko na rin to guys. Because this is about uh, determining the number of variables whose values are unknown. And step 7 is to determine the number of independent equations and carry out a degrees of freedom analysis. So, yung step 6 natin, guys, it will be easy uh, to identify the number of unknowns kapag sinulat na natin yung diagram. Now, pinagsama natin tong dalawa na to, guys, because um, the reason for these steps is to determine if yung bang information na hawak mo is enough para masolve mo yung given problem. Well, these steps are omitted especially for simple problems. So, so, madalas hindi na ginagawa tong step 6 and step 7 pero it is a good practice din no, na uh, gawin natin ito lalo na kapag ka parang uh, sa tingin mo nakukorner ka na, hindi ka na makamove on, uh, hindi mo na alam yung gagawin mo, na stuck ka na sa problem. So, you can check baka meron ka pang kulang na information or insufficient yung information na binigay. Now, step 8 is writing equations to be solved in terms of known and unknown information. Step 9 is to solve the equations and calculate the quantities asked in the problem. So, dito na tayo magsisimulang mag-compute, mag-calculate base sa mga information na nakuha natin at nakasulat na rin sa diagram. And finally guys, syempre, we have to check our answer. Baka maya niya, nasayang yung buong pagod natin dahil meron lang tayong pagkakamali na isa and hindi tayo nag-arrive sa tamang answer. Well, that's it for now guys and thank you for watching. Uh, we hope you will subscribe to our YouTube channel and please register sa aming website yung engineers.org. It is a community for Filipino engineers, engineering students, and STEM students. So that's all for now guys. Thank you and have a nice day.